the Great Resignation. Um, this has been ongoing in the US. I think it's up to nearly 4% of the population at the moment. They've been losing a lot of key people. Um, I think with the, well, I know the, the COVID situation has impacted a lot of people in different ways. Working from home, you realise you don't need to go in the office and lose an hour, two hours a day on the train, travelling, you know, getting the bus, driving, whatever, to get to work, to sit at a desk. And that's where a lot of the, these sort of roles are. Um, and a lot of people have got home offices now because uh, I know in the UK um, there were companies even buying your furniture and stuff for you. So, so the point being is, you know, geared up to work from home. Well, I do find a bit peculiar though. I, I think there should be some tax incentives now because if you're working from home, I worked out my old office desk um, when I was, I was used to be at uh, London Euston Station, just outside it. The desk there, I, I worked out, must be about 500 pounds a week for heating, lighting, rents, all, all that sort of stuff per desk um, because it's in quite a high profile building as well. But ultimately, I need to be there about twice a year. That's the reality of it. And even then, that was only for the uh, personal development piece, which if my boss could be bothered to go out of the office, he could have met us anywhere else in the UK. Um, and the reason I say that, because you might think, oh, you've got an issue. No, it's like he's the only one that far south. The, the rest of the team were all north <laughs> so so if he'd actually gone to say uh, manchester i would still probably well i would start to travel a couple of hours and uh, going to london for me at that time was five hours on the train um you know there and back so five hours in a day but at the same time manchester you got the guys that can come down from leeds and whatever and you got people coming from different areas where oh i live 10 minutes from the office let's get everybody down to london and you'd only be there an hour and then spend the rest of the day on the train. But anyway. Um, so I think a lot of people have changed their perspective from that. The value of family life has been reinforced. A lot of people have, A, been forced to work at home, but B, realised they can work from home. And on top of that, there's a bit more flexibility in working because you may actually think, right, I've got to get up in the morning, take the kids to school, come back, start doing some work. Okay, go go and have my lunch, come back, do some work, go and pick the kids up from school, do some work in the evening. And you've actually spent a bit more time with your family than you normally would. Because before that, you might have been, oh, wife has to run the kids to school, wife has to do this one. Where you may actually find that both working from home, you actually spend more time together. And you're still getting work done. And in fact, a lot of time it's more efficient. Um, bizarrely, I've been trying this for years and a lot of companies just don't get the um, flexible working because they assume that if you're at home, you may not be working. A lot of people have that mentality and my mentality on that is, well, firstly, I have a lot of deliverables. So if I don't deliver, it's very obvious that I haven't done my work because it has an impact. Uh, second one is I normally have more work than hours to do it in. Third one being, if your perspective is that if you're not visually seeing that people don't work, whose perspective is that? Because I would say they must be the one more likely not to do any work if nobody's watching. Me, I like to get the work done. Um, so there's been this big resignation thing and I do think it's only just starting to trickle because this is why there's a big push on well-being and how, you know, because companies are recognizing the brain drain is horrendous now, um, in my personal opinion. Reality is, there's a lot of stuff to push people in cheap. Um, you know, you'll do things like, um, like fast programs, leadership programs, and all this sort of stuff to try and push people through, normally younger, cheaper people. Um, but then you get people like myself that have been doing it for 27 years. They're not really interested in getting promoted. There's no real benefit for me. Um, it just involves more hours and more um, commitment to the company where 
I'm just about getting it where things are ticking over. And it's not me being selfish. I've been doing this for 27 years. And what I find is the, the better you are, the more you can do, the more people give you, and the pay doesn't seem to often match the need. <laughs> or the exploitation, or well, exploitation may be a bit too hard because you can always leave. Um, but you often, the expectation is way above um what what often could be paid for um yeah i mean like going out of the middle east for months um simply because the other person um he died in a car crash so they need somebody to go out there straight away and just do it on the fly I expected they'd be there for two weeks i was there for months those things occur but then you're doing it all the time you know different contracts failing hop to this contract and you're never home um current company doesn't hop me around but that's the main reason i took the role to be fair it was to stop traveling <laughs> sounds sounds a bit odd since i enjoy traveling but there's a difference between traveling to work and traveling to experience and enjoy stuff um but, but the thing is, I do think there's going to be more gaps in the markets. I find in my industry, they're not investing enough and quick enough. Um, so people like myself, you know, where you've got people with lots of experience and knowledge, they get voluntary redundancy or early retirement. They've been going en masse. Uh, when I was with Carillion and that that went down the toilet um, a lot of the people I worked with they retired because they already had pensions and stuff they took early retirement problem is they're people you can't replace you're taking somebody with say 30-40 years experience and replacing somebody with somebody with 2-3 years experience they're not comparable you know, you've got people that go, you know, one of the guys I work with, he was ex-Navy, um, he was an engineer, then we worked together on asset management and the um, the development of the asset industry, because we were in it very early. Um, there wasn't much he didn't know about anything. Well, that, that's the guy who told me everything I know. Um, but easily replaceable um, and I know there's not many of me and I'm like probably the second generation of the same level of knowledge um, but when I go I don't think there's many people even coming in at the business at the right level because you've got to have a cross section of so many different skills um, there's not many and the whole industry is like it so I do think the the industries are changing. They may apply more pressure. It, see, it's an odd thing at the moment because they're trying to apply pressure because they've got shortages. At the same time, they're applying pressure to people that can leave. Um, so this is where the big resignation piece is coming from because you're like, we'll force you to do it because that's why we normally work. That's our business model. And people are going, nah. I work part time, um, and you go no, you're not working part time for us. Okay, job down the road just offered me one. Um, I'm going there instead. Thank you very much. Um, so there's lots of changes in the market. And I actually think it's a good thing. I think for too long, people have been bullied and pushed to work beyond um, what's economical to them. It's economical for the business. But they've got no life. I know, I've, I've done a lot of this stuff myself. I work night and day to keep companies ticking over and keeping contracts running. Um, but you've got to get to a point where you just go, no, nah, not anymore. And it's not because um, I lack um, commitment to the business. It's burned through goodwill. And at a certain point, you've got to go, right, I'll do my job help where I can but 
you've got to look after yourself. Um, and I think this is where the great resignation is coming from because a lot of people have sort of rolled things back. Because you may have gone, well, we'll work 120 hours a week before. Now you go, no, nah, I'm not I'm not doing it anymore. Like, wow, you must do it. Well, you're not paying me for it. So no, I'm not doing it. And the only thing that can hold over you then is um, taking your job away from you. But if you're already lining something else up, which in in most cases this is what people, well, most people already have, or they've decided to change career, you know, I'm going to go and buy a fruit farm or something, and I used to be a uh, surgeon. Um, but but the point is, change your perspective. The, the life change. I mean, the guys that own the apartment we're slowly moving out of in Spain, um, the owners, one's a biochemist, and the other one's a lawyer. The lawyer is now running a farm that's been in their family for hundreds of years. Um, and I think that's it. You reach a certain point, you go, I need to do something else. If I can't adapt it, I change it. Because the, the value of your own life has changed. Because you've had a breath of fresh air, you've been working from home, you've done something that's actually said, you know what? You don't need all this. You don't need a big car. You don't need a bigger house. You want a smaller house and go and actually explore, explore the world. You want to go and take three months off and go and walk around India, whatever you want to do. That's that's big changes. Or you want to watch the kids grow up. You want to go and take the kids to, uh, um, I don't know, jiu-jitsu every Thursday. I don't know. But the point being is the perspectives have changed. And the businesses are slow to react to it, but they're being forced to react to it. Um, and I think that's going to continue, to be fair. Because what you've got, this is the first bit, the assumption is knee-jerk. Then you've got people that have now made the transition. The next thing is, their friends will see the people that have made the transition. And you get the next, I don't like using this word because it's getting overused at the moment, next wave of people start doing the same um i was seeing a i think it's there's a company in the uk a bank they've gone down to a four day week myself i agree with a four day week i don't see it as being an issue I mean, especially on my stuff because it's planned it's planned um maintenance so in theory i only my my work's annual across the year i could should be able to predict most of the dates um but it's a change in perspective overall. Um, and it's thinking outside the box. And I think companies are sort of being forced down the route of having to think outside the box rather than going, it's always been the same. This is the way we do it. That's the way, because that's the easy option. Testing things and having something fail, adapting it and changing it to make it work is the hard bit. But if you get it right, you're on a winner. Because don't get me wrong, you won't have everything to suit everybody. What you may actually have is going more flexible working, where some people work may Monday to Wednesday, but they'll do 36 hours over those three days, and they'll take Thursday and Friday off. Other people will say, oh, I want to do nine to five every day because I've got my other stuff around. I like to go badminton in the evenings on a Tuesday we go to the pub on a Wednesday don't know. I think the, the the point being is looking at how it fits in with different types of lifestyles but it's a there's, there's does seem to be a more of a shift to actually asking people what works where before it's like well that's your contract tough uh, where people go I mean 4% of a working population is a lot especially where they are because the, we're not talking the manual labour guys. Um, we're talking about key people in businesses. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's a cog in a wheel. Well, if one person's not there, the wheel doesn't turn. Um, but what I'm saying is getting somebody to press the button on the press is much easier to recruit than somebody who does their entire financial um, planning and business modelling for whatever they're doing, um, which are hard to source, hard to recruit, and expensive to recruit 
And the thing is, when you recruit the guy that you had for 10 years, when you took him on, his salary was say 35,000 and it's only gone up in the tiny section every year. The guy you're having to get now is about 90,000 because you're now paying market value. Um, it has a massive effect on business. But I do think it's good that it's happening because it actually say value your people. Um, and I'm not a socialist, by the way. <laughs> Don't go there. No, um, but I do agree in fair pay for fair work. And, you know, I'm not talking about exploitation or anything like that. I'm not talking about uh, fair trade stuff because, to be fair, when you get down the food stuff, it, it all becomes a bit strange because you have companies like Nescafe and that with a lot of control over markets um, Starbucks with its own farms all that sort of stuff not talking about that because I can't heal the earth today thank you what I'm talking about is people being able to afford a standard of living that actually functions and actually being valued to what they are whether that's monetary and actually great job appreciate everything you do or the fact that they've got a great work-life balance or all of it because um, I know like I said myself I'm very emotionally anyway uh, so I've made sacrifices family-wise for money before same I've made sacrifices for family over money done it the other way around the point being is set your goals up look at your perspective and like I said, even looking at part-time these days, it's starting to look more attractive to me. I mean, it's something I wouldn't even have thought out of before. But after being stuck in a small room for a year, it's surprising how your world changes. Um, and then obviously we didn't even talk about the people that have had people die. That makes a massive difference. Or they got sick. Um because that ch changes you as a person massively so I do think the great resignation still has more to come um, I haven't really heard much of it on the UK to be fair it's been mainly the America I was going to say the Americas uh, uh, how stuck in history was I um, but I do think the UK is experiencing it in a big way I can see it um, I look at the the regional salary increases are up by 12% um, because there's a shortage uh, don't get me wrong Brexit helped with that by telling everybody they weren't welcome here so they went home and they were complaining we ain't got anybody to actually do any work um, but on top of that we do have a lot of people rethinking their lifestyles and reevaluating where they want to be, what they want to do, what they want to achieve, and looking out the window thinking, I miss my holiday this year. And the last flight I've seen that went to Spain, just listening to the people on the plane, they were on about, oh, it's been two years, it's been two years since been it. It was, for them, it was a massive sigh of relief once the plane took home, uh, off, because they'd been nowhere for that two years. They knew they missed it. They missed an important part of their life, which was actually relaxing. Thanks for watching.